what will be your all your league first team yeah so first of all the exclamation point again we're doing this without the russian teams yeah we're excluding them from from these awards uh yeah all your league first team uh, i have mike james from monaco and then last week we were talking a lot about Vasa Mitic in the MVP discussion, but I've read so many comments from people and basically very strong arguments about Shane Larkin's case this yeah. season. So I was kind of convinced that Larkin deserves more appreciation mm -hmm. for this season. So I'm putting Shane Larkin actually in my all Euroleague first team mm -hmm. alongside Mike James. So Shane Larkin from FS. Then I have two forwards. These were easy decisions. Uh, Sasha Vezenko from Olympiakos and Nikola Mirotic from Barcelona. And at center, I'm going with the good old Eddie Tavares from Real Madrid. You're cheating a little bit, no? Why? Putting Vezenko as a, let's see, small, small forward. forward. Yeah. Can he Do play, you have to can, be can traditional? Can he play the third position? Yeah, of course he can. When, when I'm building a all EuroLeague team, the same goes with all NBA team. Mm -hmm. I'm choosing guards, forwards, yeah. and center. Okay. And I don't think there's there's any need to put emphasis on who's a shooting guard and who's a small forward. Mm -hmm. And honestly, would you like to have a team with Sasha Vezenkov as a small forward and Nikola Mirotic as of a power not, forward? Yeah. Vezenkov has the skills, the speed and everything to play the third position. I don't think it's a problem. You can call it cheating or whatever. Mm. I think it would be a sin to leave out Vezenkov from the all EuroLeague first team. Mm -hmm after the season he he had after the regular season he had the playoffs are still to come but this is my first team yeah let's say i try to put it more like traditional way okay uh, like your league did in, in the past couple of years although i i agree with your uh five i mean with your approach and this like putting all just best guards uh, forwards and and center i try to stay let's say more traditional and that's why i put uh, vasily misic in the first team uh just because i see him as a let's say, more pure point guard than Shane Larkin or, or Mike James. So I have Mitic, Mike James. From the small forwards, I don't see, let's say, elite option uh, for this uh, all EuroLeague team, but I took uh, Shawan Shields because although he missed some games, he still played more than 20 games. And uh, against the best opponents, he was really good, like scoring 15 points per, per game against top four uh, EuroLeague clubs. And then I have Nikola Mirotic, of course, and Eddie Tavares uh, as, as a center. Mm. Uh, okay, so let's let's move to the all EuroLeague second team, yeah. right? So what is your second um, team? It's a different type because uh, you have more to choose from uh, when you're building the first team you're focusing mainly on the teams that are in the playoffs and are with the possibility of making it to the final four for the all euro league second team i tried to look at some other players as well from mm. teams that didn't make it to the top eight well first of all of course then vasa mits is my point guard mm. there's no question about it uh, then I really wanted to have a one guy from Maccabi. I think they deserve a shout from w for what they did, and they might finish fifth if they win their last game. And uh, I don't think he was very consistent throughout the whole season, especially in the first part of the season. But now, when they were making this playoff push, he really played very well, not only scoring, but also dishing assists and doing all the things for his team. Scotty Wilbekin, I'm going to put him in my all EuroLeague second team, although many could disagree and have other names. Uh, then small forward, it's Nikola Kalinic from Zvezda. I just think he had an amazing season. I I think if you take Kalinic from this Zvezda's team, you have Zvezda somewhere at the bottom of the EuroLeague. He was basically the not only the glue guy, he was everything for Cervena Zvezda this season. And the last game of the regular season just proves the point with this near triple-double performance against Anadolu FS. Nikola Kalinic, I think he deserves a spot in, in, in this all EuroLeague second mm -hmm. second five. Uh, then Gershon Yabusele, this is a very easy one at the power forward. Great season for, for the Frenchman. Nothing else to be said, mm. honestly. Okay, and about and, the center. And center... One of the most intriguing positions, probably. center, I was thinking about different options. Yeah. Again, you're feeling disappointed with Fenerbahce, the way mm -hmm. their season went and everything that happened. But Jan Vesely still has uh, great numbers from this season. And uh, I still think he's one of the top five EuroLeague players in general. So I'm, I'm choosing Jan Vesely 
Yeah, okay. So my five is Costas Lucas. I just think that he's okay, okay, his numbers are not so impressive compared to his colleagues like uh, Dorsey or Vezenko, although according to performance index rating, I think he's second best in the Olympiacos team. But let's say his stats, his, his stats line is not so shining, um, but I think that he's the brain of, of this great Olympiacos is, team and sure. this awesome Olympiacos season. And as I said, I have uh, Larkin because I just think that, you know, I took James and Larkin as my shooting guards and I think that Mike James made impressive job with this Monaco team uh, leading uh, this club to the playoffs. Uh, so I have Lucas and Larkin as my guards. And that's the same debate I had with Maccabi. Had to put somebody from Maccabi out of respect uh, for what they did this season. So and I, had, I had three guys, Wilbekin, Nunnally, and Zizic. Uh, they had great, great season, but I put James Nunnally because he was really consistent. He was really uh, efficient. He was scoring almost 14 points per game on, on almost 40% of three-point shooting. And uh, against top four teams, he was averaging uh, more than uh, 13 points. And in the last 10 games, uh, he was the seventh most efficient player uh, according to per uh, player performance uh, perf performance index uh, rating. So that was huge for a late Maccabi run uh, to make it uh, to the playoffs. And of course, it was easy to take Vesenkov as my uh, second best spot power forward uh, if I went uh, traditional way with these uh, all EuroLeague teams. And for the center, I had this uh, discussion inside myself uh, with uh, Vesely, uh, Zizic, uh, some other guys, but I decided uh, to think out of the box, kind of, and I took Mustafa Fall. I just really love his all-around game, not just because he's very efficient offensively, he's also a very good passer. I mean, teammates uh, love being uh, around him because he's not helping uh, only with his size, but he has great passing abilities uh, because he's very high IQ um, center, which is kind of rare quality for, for Bix. He's really beloved inside locker room of, of Olympiacos. And of course, his defensive uh, presence was huge, not only inside the paint, but the way he uh, played on the switch was really tremendous. And all those, uh, his stats are not so impressive, like almost nine points per game, 13-14 uh, uh, performance index rating, but I think that he deserved this uh, credit. And yeah, I have three Olympiacos players on this mm. second EuroLeague team.